Welcome back. Getting back to work after major surgery is challenging, but the man we're about to meet has done something nobody else in our state has ever done before. 42-year-old Reese Chambers is a firefighter with East Jefferson Fire Rescue in Chimicum and is the first firefighter in our state to return to frontline duty after having a heart transplant. Can you believe that? Reese joins me now along with John Jansen from the Washington State Department of Labor and Industries. Welcome to you both. You, you look great. How are you feeling? I, I feel wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. That's um, okay. How did you even get to the point you needed a heart transplant? Um, it was just a, a long process of a, of a heart that just didn't want to didn't want to work like it was supposed to. It wasn't and just, playing with yeah, the team. Yeah, it wasn't playing. It wasn't playing fair. <laughs> and just over time, just got weaker and weaker. And um, uh, at, to to the point where it wasn't going to be able to sustain my life anymore. And we got to the point where we needed a transplant. So, you, so young. Um, we have some pictures of you in the hospital. What went through your mind as you began to realize what needed to happen? Um, well, I had been sick for so long, and like feeling what? feeling just like you're just you're tired, you're cranky, you're you know short it's of breath, your limbs are falling life. asleep. No. <laughs> yeah, it's um, you, know, you have trouble eating and sleeping, and you can't. You can't sleep laying down. You gotta. It's just like it's just a miserable existence. Super scary. So yeah. So by the time I got to the point where I needed a transplant and I was in the hospital waiting, it was more of one of those. Please, just just move on to the next chapter of my life. I know it's scary, but I don't want to live like this anymore. My family deserves better. So. How long did you wait for heart? Um, I was on the list for about six months before I got the the heart transplant, which is actually a really relatively short amount yeah. of time. And when it happens, when it's your turn and this is about to go, you know, how do you cope with <laughs> what might happen, what will happen, what's uh, next? Well, you know, I, I am a firefighter. I, I looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to see what they were going to do to me. And it was brutal, right? It's pretty brutal. Yeah. But um, like I said, I was done. I was done being sick. I wanted, I wanted to be better. I wanted to be the man my wife deserved and the dad my kids deserved. And, you know, I wanted to be a fireman that I knew I could be and the heart transplant was the only way to go to get that done so it uh when it when it came and it was time we were we were ready more than ready so what a blessing yeah absolutely um, John how did L and I help well the mission at L and I of course is to help injured workers heal and get back to work so um, initially his um, condition was accepted as an occupational disease due to exposure and those things smoke and, uh, and that kind of thing yeah and so um, we decided we didn't decide it's what we do. Um, we jumped in and helped him as best we could, determined uh, if getting back to work was going to be a feasible option for him. And of course, his employer, um, his chief, was very adamant about it. he wanted Reese back regardless. <laughs> Even if he couldn't be a firefighter, he wanted yeah. him back. And so That's it made our job a little easier chief, because yeah. we've got those options available. And, uh, but Reese was, he stuck to it. When I first contacted him, his first goal was, I'm getting back to work as a firefighter, John. And I, that well, it's an awful lofty goal, um, yeah. you know. But he stayed very focused, um, and I kept in contact with him occasionally. And now we got him through the occupational medicine doctor that, uh, you know, found him fit for duty. And here he is. Here he is. Yeah. So you weren't going to be satisfied with the desk duty? No, no. I mean, <laughs> yes, only if it, if it meant going back to the line would have compromised my heart. And I didn't want that. My my first goal was to live and and to exp to keep going with my kids and. And, and live a great life, but um, I wanted to be a fireman, absolutely. So plan A was plan A, and it was yeah. from the beginning, um, and I, I was okay with that. So. What was recovery like? Oh. <laughs> um, so it's not like you just get up it, no, and say thank you very much and go back to yeah, work. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Um, you know, there's, you know, they, they cut open your chest, and so there's, you, know, you can't lift for a while. You basically are retraining yourself to, to sit and to walk, and then, and then to, to walk upstairs and then to walk around the neighborhood and then you know carrying weights and and just building up the cardio strength again and the um, just you've got to retrain yourself pretty much from from ground zero all the way back up again so it, it's not easy and you know it's heart transplant also once that hard part is done it's not a fairy tale um, there's a lot of lifelong um, things that I have to do as, right. as far as care goes and medications and um, you know it's it's a one. It's wonderful, but it's also kind of like this is a this is a life lifetime of recovery I'm going to be going through. So, um, what does firefighting mean to you that you were willing to go that hard to get back? Um. So, 
for me, I wanted to be a fireman from pretty much day one, but it became real to me, the fire service became real to me when, when my brother passed away and those men and women came to my house and they, they took care of my brother um, and then there was nothing they could do but I saw how hard they worked and I saw the pain in their eyes when they couldn't save him. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, you know, and how old were you? 18. You know, and, and I just saw um, those guys give my family hope in that moment when we were hopeless and uh, made us feel like, hey, if these guys can't do the job, no one in the world is going to be able to do this job. And um, I wanted to be one of them. And I spent the rest of my life trying to do it. And I made it, and I couldn't be happier. And when I got it and it was taken away from me, I was like, i got to get back. I just have to do that. That's, that's my mission in life. I have to, I have to be one of those those guys. So, That's amazing. Yeah. First day back on the job. Yeah. When you came in um, for frontline duty. Yeah. What was it like? What were the men and women there <laughs> doing? Um, you know, it's honestly, it was. It was like walking back into my home. Um, the guys were there, high fives, hugs, and then it was business as usual. And we went and we ran our calls, and we did our job. And I was just welcomed back in as one of the crew, and that's the way it should be. Um, and I was, I was very happy for that, and I'm glad that it, there was no pomp and circumstance and anything. It was just like, Reese is here to do his job, and he's, yeah. our, he's our lieutenant. Let's go to work. And family came together yep, around it was, you. It was really fun. Um, it was great, and I, it will be a day I will never forget. To well, congratulations Thank you very much. to you. Did you learn anything you can share with the rest of us about meeting a goal? Um, absolutely. Um, you know, there's marathons in life. Right? I mean, you're not going to be able to get your goal right away. You have to set, set short goals and just keep plugging away every day, move forward a little bit every day, and eventually, eventually you can get there. Um, so one little step at a time. One little step at a time is what you got to well, do. Well, I think if you can do this, a lot of us are going to feel a lot of Monday motivation based <laughs> on this story. Thank Absolutely. you for what Ellen and I does for thank us you. as well. And Shimakum is pretty lucky to have oh, you. Thank you very much. Bless you both.